Felixstone Matters on this Tuesday morning. Today we have Andy Smith in here um, with us, who is a councillor. Um, he's come in um, to tell us about um, the investment onto Felixstone Pier. Um, Felixstone Pier, as as we were in in the past, was was created in 1905. And it's been through a lot of changes, and Andy will hit, be able to give us a little bit of history, explain what's going on. Morning, Andy. Morning, Jacob. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you. Good. It's another sunny day in Felixstone. Well, near Just enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so before we get into um, the Felixstone Pier, tell us a little bit about yourself, or what, what your sort of role is. Uh, okay, I've been a councillor on the town council for uh, too long, most people would say, since 1983. <laughs> Uh, and on the district since 1991. Uh, for the past uh, uh, 12 years or something, I've been a deputy leader uh, at the district council. Oh, okay. uh, and I have responsibility, for, uh, we run a, what we call the cabinet system now, mm. cabinet responsibility for um, planning, all, yep. all the planning applications and all that stuff, uh, and for coastal management right, right up the coast as far as uh, all the sweep. Oh, right. So, you, so you're... you're Involved in most of the planning, or all the planning that goes on in Felix days, uh, uh, in, Fe well, in Suffolk Coastal, and as in whole, Suffolk yeah. Coastal, yes. So, yeah. so and, uh, and my family uh, have Felix Day roots going back to uh, before 1900. Oh, really? Uh, my grandfather was the town's printer for many years, from 1895 or thereabouts until oh. uh, well after the Second World War. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. So, um, so you mentioned about um, the planning. Um, you've been involved in in schemes already. So, uh, shared space, for example, you you were involved in. Yes, we put the. Uh, well, uh, I was involved in a in a wide team on that. The yeah. county council, the, the district, the town, uh, and others. Um, there's been discussion for uh, many years about pedestrianisation Hamilton Road, which raises a lot of heat on both sides. Yes. Uh, there was an experiment on that in. Uh, 1988, I think it was, uh, yeah. where it was um, Hamilton Road was closed to traffic for six months, uh, and one or two businesses uh, went out of business, and others came very, very close. Mm. And it was clear that, that it just wasn't working; it was killing the town. So it was very controversial at the time. We uh, we undid that uh, and went back to having parking there. Mm. Um, but there's always um, a lot of people who would like to get rid of cars, but. And delivery lorries and so on, it just isn't practical. Mm. Um, I think you have to look at a town like Felixstowe, very different to the major centres like Colchester, Ipswich, mm. Norwich. They have enough um, uh, weight, if you like, enough uh, to, to be a centre in their own right. Yes. Felixstowe is, is, is much more of a come and go, mm. um, and so it, it really doesn't work. But um, the, there was a government scheme to promote something called shared space, where the idea is that um, you make it. Um, you cease to differentiate between road and path, cars and pedestrians. Mm. The idea is that everybody politely shares the road surface. <laughs> yeah. um, and it works in remarkable places, not least, for example, Covent Garden in London oh, um, yes. and various other places. Okay. Um, and fortunately, there was some government uh, grant money available that the county council got hold of. Mm. Um, and after a lot of discussion and talk, we, we did the scheme that we now have. And um, so that involved you know, remodelling the central Hamilton Road, as everybody knows. Yes, yes. All nice fresh and, and mm. so on and so forth uh, still allow cars to go through but in a way where they effectively really can only go slowly yes indeed. Um, uh, we were able as part of that to uh, fulfil another long ambition which was to s cease to have the situation where the centre of your town where's the centre of Felix at the triangle mm. was some rather naff 1980s toilets. public toilets yes. <laughs> um, they were due to be refurbished we put that money together and we were able to move the toilets over onto um uh, Crescent Road car park yes. and they're sort of very very modern toilets mm, with the very best disabled facilities they're and all that sort good. of thing uh, and then use the space for the uh, canopy mm. uh, that went up to be a, an attraction in the centre of town and uh, I think it just works great I just love it when the Sally Armour in there playing a band yes, or are, yes. somebody's having you know some stalls or yeah. uh, an exhibition or display of this that and the other or just, just selling some bits and pieces yeah. um, it, it's it's a real um, social centre it's for the nice, town nice so point. you know yeah. uh, and then as part of that also we um, we were able to, another long ambition was to do something about a traffic, or Bent Hill being the main road for traffic to and from the seafront. Oh yes, of course that's changed completely. Um, and years ago I, I chaired, well for, for a long time I chaired something called the Town Centre Management Group and one of the ideas that um, uh, came out of that was um, at the top of Convalescent Hill, 
mm. which was very awkward, particularly if we were coming up, because the main road, mm. the right of way, was along the top. Yep. If you were coming up Convalescent Hill, you had to stop, and there was an awkward junction over to Tomlin Road. But nobody lives on Convalescent Hill, unlike South Hill and Bent Hill. Yes. Yeah. So it seemed to be the natural traffic route. So as part of the shared space, we remodelled that so that it's a smooth traffic run, mm. um, Woolsey Gardens, yes. uh, Convalescent Hill, and down onto the seafront in the same other direction. Mm. Uh, and amongst other things, that helped out people in, in um, South Hill, which is very narrow and had a lot of traffic going up and down. Mm. The, the traffic engineers call it create a desire line for the motorists, so the easiest thing. So it was a good package, and Bent Hill, yeah. of course, was made much nicer. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And Undercliff Road West was traffic calmed along in front of the town hall past the War Memorial. Mm. Um, so that again becomes an area which is much more amenable to um, being in rather than just driving through. Mm. So, so it sound, it's almost like we're, we're creeping down to the seafront and as the Evening Star has suggested there, there is going to be some investment on the pier and the surrounding area. So, um, so before we get into that, um, the pier, what's the history of it? Well, a lot of, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about the, the pier. The main one for many people being that the council should do something about it, or the council owns it. Well, no, mm. the pier has never been owned by the council. It's never been um, right. part of our, our business in, it, in the direct sense. Mm. Um, it was originally built uh, between 1903 and opened in 1905, in the days um, in the Edwardian heyday of Felixstowe, when it was a very fashionable resort. Yeah. Um, and people used to come by steamer from London oh, wow. um, to, to visit Felixstowe. And, of course, the sea there is really quite shallow, mm. uh, and there was no way a steamer could berth anywhere near the beach. Uh, in fact, Felixstowe uh, for many years was the third longest pier in the country. Oh, uh, South End was obviously the longest, everybody knows, mm. uh, but it was, it was more than half a mile long. Half a mile, yes. Uh, and that was fine. But unlike other, many other seaside piers, the local one is South Wold and some of the big piers at Brighton and Scarborough and so on, mm. uh, it never had um, amusements and any way of making money mm. on it. So once the steamer trade ceased, it became you know, more of a liability than an asset really. Yes. Um, but they kept, it was kept going through through the 30s. Um, there, there used to be a, a tram trunk, you know, trundled all the way out to oh, the end okay. in those days. Um, but then in the war, mm. uh, with the invasion scare, uh, it was bombed in two places very successfully by the, R by the RAF <laughs> uh, to avoid that. So after the war, uh, obviously the, the further part was, uh, was redundant mm. entirely. That was demolished. The inner end was rebuilt yep. with new concrete supports underneath to replace the timber ones and a concrete deck on top, mm. but the sandwich in the middle of the original 1903 wooden structure. Yep. Uh, and that survived until the late 90s, by which time um, it, it, it had become entirely rotten underneath. I've got some photos at home of a survey that was taken from a boat looking up at the, um, the underside of the wooden structure, mm. and it's, it, a lot of it was just dead rotten, so it became a dangerous structure, and that's been its status from... 98, I think, until recently, well, until now. Yeah. Because before that, I think it was 96 or something, there was a, an attempt to, to invest some money in, but that, that never seemed to... Um, well, to yes, there, there, there wasn't, yeah, and at that stage, um, I think, uh, uh, I'm not sure it's been in the public domain before, the, it was offered to the council for one pound. One pound? Uh, but given what oh. I've said about it, uh, yeah, well, it yeah. gracefully declined that one. <laughs> Um, yes, and I think the, the, the genesis of the current idea um, was born uh, around that time. Mm. Um, but the question was, how on earth was it all going to be paid for, of course? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and there's been a trust sort of formed afterwards to, to try and look after it? I, I um, um, no, not yeah. the pier. No, there's a trust looking after the spa gardens. Oh, the spa gardens. Um, ah, OK. Yeah, no, the pier is, is wholly in private ownership. Yeah. Stan Threadwell's company, which is... Oh, excuse me, Stan. Felix Stowe Amusements, I think it is. Right, Family yes. Amusements. Yep. Okay. So, so, so it's been a it's been a, um, a pier that's just sort of been there to walk along in the in while well, now it's now it's just an amusement um, arcade. Just, just the pier head, yeah. yeah. So, so what's actually going to? Well, happen? the good news is um, that uh, the company owned by Stan Threadwell has uh, um, come up with a, a superb scheme. Mm. Um, as you mentioned in your intro, according to the Evening Star, uh, yes. a £15 million pound investment. Yeah. I'm not quite sure whether that might be accurate, but certainly a very, very substantial yes. uh, investment. Um, and, and so what's to happen is they're going to demolish absolutely everything that you currently see, right down to seabed level. Wow. That's the pier itself mm. and the pier head building and the uh, rather flaky structure that it, uh, it sits on, which 
has suffered over the years from, from as the beach level has gone up and down and more often down than up perhaps. <laughs> so that's going to be uh, demolished and they're going to build effectively a, a new pier head but on the grand scale. Uh, okay. um, it'll be more than twice as, as, as long out to sea as the current building. Yep. Not, 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 not twice as long as the pier. Yep. Um, uh, very much wider um, and uh, about twice the height and uh, a, a building which is... Uh, a, a big semicircle at the seaward end. Yep. Um, round the outside, there'll be a walkway, so you still get the you sort still of get to the, go the, out, walk, yeah. the, the pier experience, just yep. just not as far out. Um, and then the the, um, the ground floor will have um, some of the same sort of thing as is there now. In part, uh, the um, retail on the frontage by the promenade, okay. amusements, but uh, and a, uh, a bowling bowling facility in oh, there. Oh, there will be uh, bowling as well. Um, okay. And then at the seaward end of that, there'll be a cafe restaurant, mm. uh, obviously with an internal area with um, glazed doors that can be open or closed according to yeah. whether it's July or January. That'd be nice. Um, <laughs> the other way around sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Around. Um, and then um, uh, there'll be a, 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 another a large sitting out area at the end, at the seaward end. Uh, then the next level up, uh, at the seaward end, there'll be what's called a mezzanine floor, a, a floor that covers half the building or part of the building, yep. which will be a function room to be again with a bar and all that sort oh, of thing. Oh, lovely! Uh, I think yeah. the 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 uh, planning application says that will normally seat two hundred, but can be expanded to three hundred and twenty-five. Wow, that's quite lovely. So that really? can hold really, you know, all, all manner of, of mm. events, which will be great for the town. Definitely. And then above that, there'll be a, uh, an observa a round observation tower with a dome on top. Um, that you'll be able to go up to, and I think uh, they're going to have screens there with information from the dock about what, what ships you can by. see and that oh, sort of thing. Brilliant. Um, ah. Yeah, so it'll be great. So, so I think I think you also mentioned um, um, the the fact that um, that it's we're going to have to ra well you're going to have to raise the the promenade and, uh, and that's right. If you think about the if you stand in front of the pier at the moment, um, you're obviously on the promenade. Yeah. You've got the uh, the flood wall behind you, which is sort of four or five feet high, yeah. and the uh, current floor level of the pier building is about at eye level, about, again about five feet up, with steps up to it, which means uh, a that area is not, is not particularly attractive, yeah. and b it's it's not exactly you know welcoming you know into the pier. No. Uh, so what uh, they're planning to do, which is quite uh, imaginative and uh, um, lateral thinking, I think, is to uh, for that stretch in front of the new building to raise the level of the promenade right. to. Uh, it pretty much be exactly the same level as the flood wall is at the moment, uh, oh, okay. which is almost identical to the uh, level of the pier yep. floor. So raise that level of the promenade. Um, obviously, then you need to be able to continue to walk along the promenade. So there'll be a ramp, uh, sort of better, less less steep than the disabled norm, yep. uh, up one side and down the other. Oh. Uh, then there'll be s steps uh, the other side of what is uh, the flood wall down into the leisure centre forecourt, big sort of wide semicircular feature steps. So there'll be a very natural and attractive um, entrance and, 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 and way between the, the leisure centre forecourt, the leisure centre itself, obviously the car park, up onto the pier and in fact onto the promenade. Oh, wow. um, and there'll be disabled ramps for that as well and that sort of thing. Um, which is, uh, I think, a very good solution. And, and by the way, that keeps everything above any worst case flood level. Um, should there be a big tide, you'll still be able to get uh, in and out of the pier if needs must. Oh, brilliant. So uh, I think the other thing that when you were showing me the diagrams um, before this, there's there's going to be a feature window or, or something along the, yeah. Along the front. Yeah, uh, quite remarkable really, along the, the upper level, um, mm. along the uh, promenade frontage, yeah, what they call a feature window, which you can best describe really as a stained glass window with um, a mosaic you know, of ships and, and, and Felix Stowe history or something. Thank you.